Okay, dear students, now we are coming to the 19th question and you are asked to find the directional derivative of this function at this particular point in the direction of uh, uh, the vector in, in the direction of the vector 2i minus j plus 2k. So your vector function is given, a point is given, so the question is to find the directional derivative of the given function in the direction of this the given, given vector. So how can you find this? This basically is obtained by first finding the gradient, students. We need to find the gradient of this function. And this basically is done uh, by finding the partial derivative of f with respect to x and with respect to y as well. And also with respect to z. Once we obtain that, we will substitute the given point x1, y0, and z minus 1. And we need to find also the unit vector uh, of the given vector 2i minus j plus 2k. So let me show you how it can be done. As I said, the gradient of the function uh, shall be obtained first, and that is a partial derivative of f with respect to x along i, the partial derivative of f with respect to i along j, and the partial derivative of f along z uh, with respect to z along k. And this is uh, this one, students. The partial derivative of f with respect to x is 3x squared plus z squared, as you see. Uh, and the partial derivative of f with respect to y is uh, z squared, you see. And the partial derivative of f with respect to z is, you see, guys, uh, 2yz plus 2xz. So we can have this. Now we need to substitute what this uh, point, this uh, this coordinates of the point 1 0 minus 1 in place of x y z so here your x is 1 and y 0 and z minus 1 so everything is, is substituted here so after substitution there you will get 4i plus j minus 2k because your x is 1 so 3 can come and z is minus 1 when you square it 1 can come 3 plus 1 makes 4 and z is minus 1 and it's square makes 1 so j comes and finally uh, you're having y 0 there so 0 plus minus 2 is going to come which actually is minus 2k therefore the gradient now is obtained guys so the gradient of the function at 1 0 minus 1 is uh, 4i plus j minus 2k so we have to determine the unit vector you see uh, for the given vector the given vector here is 2i minus j plus 2k. This is not a unit vector, so we have to change this to a unit vector. To change a non-zero unit vector to a unit vector, what we need to do is we have to divide the given vector by its magnitude, right? So 2i minus j plus 2k is taken as 2 minus 1, 2, and then we have to look for the magnitude. Students, the magnitude of this vector can be obtained by taking the square root of the sum of the square of the components. So 2 square is 4, right? And minus 1 square is 1, and again 2 square is 4. So 4 plus 1 makes 5, and 5 plus 4 makes 9, so radical 9 is 3. So 1 over the magnitude, which actually is 3, is here. So 1 over 3, 2 minus 1, 2, which basically is 2 times 1 over 3, 2 over 3, minus 1 over 3, and 2 times 1 is 2, 2 over 3 can come. So, this is the unit vector for this particular vector given here. So the gradient is known at the point and the unit vector is known. So now the directional derivative of the function in the direction of the unit vector is going to be the dot product of the gradient and the unit vector. As you studied, the dot product of these two is the magnitude of this one times the magnitude of the unit vector times cosine of the angle between the two. So this gets maximum when the gradient is in the direction of the unit vector, right? When the gradient is in the direction or when the unit vector is in the direction of the gradient, the two, you see, the value of this dot product can be maximum. And this can get minimum, and this can get minimum when the direction of the unit vector is in the opposite uh, to the gradient one. You see, that is to say, when the angle between these two, the gradient in the unit vector comes to be 180, this directional derivative gets the smallest value, and that would be the negative of the magnitude of the product of what the unit vector and the gradient of this. Basically, the unit vector has a magnitude one, so we can consider the negative of what along the the, the the norm of the gradient, the norm of the gradient. That is the minimum one. 
the maximum is a positive of the norm of the gradient at that particular point. So let's proceed. So we can write these two as components. Look, the gradient of f is already determined for i plus j minus 2k because it's already calculated as you see here and the unit vector is also calculated. Here it is 2 over 3, negative 1 over 3, 2 over 3. So the dot product between these two can be done like this. Look, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 over 3. And this is negative 1 over 3 minus 2 times 2 minus 4 over 3. So 8 minus 1 is 7, minus 4 is 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So students, the uh, directional derivative of the given function um, in the direction of the given vector at this particular point is obtained to be number 1. So far, so good. What comes next is question number 20, and it is about uh, finding the divergence of a vector field. So students, the divergence of a vector field is a scalar output because the divergence of a vector is nothing but it is defined as, you see, the dot product of the del operator with the vector function. So the del uh, operator is nothing but it is a partial derivative with respect to x along i and partial derivative with respect to i along j plus partial derivative with respect to z along k. So this has to be dotted with a given uh, vector field. This is your vector field. So when you do uh, this, you are going to have this one because the partial derivative with respect to x, you see, comes to the x component. The partial derivative with respect to y again comes to the y component here and the partial derivative with respect to z comes to, you see, the z component, 5z. So what is expected from us now is just to carry out the partial derivative of these three. So when you do partial derivative with respect to x, treat y as a constant and derivative with respect to x, so you will get minus e is a power of x students times cos y that is the expression itself comes here and when you do the partial derivative of this with respect to y look this is the expression of x and arbitrary number so this is taken as a coefficient so here it will be cos y because the derivative of this with respect to y is cos y so you are left with 2 e is a power of x cos y and here, the partial derivative with respect to z of 5, z is 5, right? It is 5 because the coefficient of z here is 5. So you are having this minus e to the power of x cos y plus 2 e to the power of x cos y plus 5. So students, now look, this is going to be uh, 2 e to the power of x cos y minus e to the power of x cos y makes e to the power of x cos y. So finally, e to the power of x cos y plus 5 can come. You see, you can add these two because they are like terms. So e is a power of x cos y plus 5 can uh, uh, come. So that's uh, all about this uh, question number 20. And when we come to question number 21, you are asked to find the value of k if the given vector, that is the vector field given by f here, is uh, divergence-free or solenoidal. Uh, a student, a given vector field f is said to be divergence-free if, you know, the divergence of the given vector field comes to be zero and uh, you're asking now here to, to determine the value of k in order to have this solenoidal phenomenon so the solution goes like this uh, as I said earlier first we have to determine the divergence of this vector field f and this divergence of f is a dot product of the del operator is it del and uh, the given vector field f so this directly is the same as this one. Uh, basically, it is uh, it is here uh, partial derivative with respect to x along i, with respect to y along j, with respect to z along k. Dot through is is a power of x sine y i plus two k y plus e is a power of x cos y j minus eighteen z k. So what has been done here is simply f is taken as it is. So now we need to find the dot product between these two. So as I did earlier, we have to have partial derivative with respect of x of the first component. Next, partial derivative with respect to y of the second component. Look, this one. And partial derivative with respect to z of the last component. So everything is labeled here. So the partial derivative with respect to x of e is a power of x sine y, as you know, is uh, e is a power of x sine y, as it is. But when you come to the partial derivative respect to y for this, you do have 2k. 2k. And the partial derivative of this respect to y is minus e to the power of x sine y. It will be minus sine y, e to the power of x sine y. And the partial derivative with respect to z for this particular term is minus 18. 
So students, you will get this one. E is a power of x sine y plus 2k minus e is a power of x sine y minus 18 equals 0. Now if you observe these two terms, these two terms are, you know, um, identical except there is signs. So these two can cancel and then you are left with 2k minus 18 equals 0. So from this, uh, it is very simple to determine the value of k and finally you will obtain uh, k to be 9, okay?